I came down for an interview as a as a as about to be a graduate, and um, and there was a free bar, and I just couldn't believe it. I just piled into it. <laughs> Please, I shall, I shall. And. Bar in the evening, and we observed their behavior. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, quite. I mean, I think it emboldened me to actually admit, fess up that actually I was off to Caltech the next year to do a master's. But um, maybe you know we could, I could have a little monthly consultancy or something, and uh, and I'd come back and work for them. <laughs> Woke up in the morning thinking, oh, that was a bit bold. Uh, nothing's going to come of it. But uh, actually, there was an awful letter in the post, and. Uh, and so that was the arrangement. So I went off to Caltech and got imbued in the whole sort of world of um, chip design, VLSI, um, CAD especially. That was my big thing then. And, um, and also Xerox PARC. We, at Caltech, they had a whole bunch of altos. And they had uh, networked uh, Star Trek <laughs> and Maze Wars on it. It was just fantastic. You know? and, and, you know, mice. You know, the, the whole, you know, the modern workstation, basically. Uh, it was just, so I, I, I came back to Bristol with all of this in my head. And, um, and um, just, I was allowed to work on, you know, blue sky projects. And, and the thing we were doing was, well, to try and make a modern computer-aided design system to, to build this chip that uh, was being designed which was just, you know, totally, I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I was, I mean, to use a phrase, a pig in shit, <laughs> you might say. It was exactly what I was um, into, um, and, and we were given free reign. And so we wrote all this software um, that would help you do symbolic layouts of chips and uh, do floor planning and, and some of the stuff that had sort of imbued into me from being at Caltech. Well, one of the interesting things really was um, how, do you just, how do you check a large scale design full of, you know, well, I forget how many transistors, but it was, it was a lot for then. Um, and of course there were so many cells, but you can make use of, of um, symmetries obviously. So, you know, that was one of the innovative things I suppose in the design system is that we could, we could um, interactively design rule check the chip, the the, um, the cells as they were being drawn, and when they were composed together, we could we could very quickly actually design rule check the whole chip, and also do a topology match against the chip uh, to, to extract the topology from the, uh, the from the the chip that had been drawn in the design system, and compare that against the uh, topology of the circuits that had been simulated. Um, and then we had to do the fracturing, of course, to generate the mask geometries. So the, the whole thing was like a whole homegrown thing from, from start to end. And so I, in my mind, actually, that was just a, an absolutely unique opportunity that uh, you know, happened nowhere else I could see in Britain at the time. And it just it really felt like the, the West Coast had come to the UK for that. So when we um, spun out of Inmos and, um, and uh, formed this company, Mako, um, we originally um, used transputers as our, as our fabric um, and as our compute. Of course, um, you know, as things progressed, we suddenly realized actually, you know, we're, because we're going to be running real applications on this thing and applications actually crash and need a virtual memory subsystem. And then, so we moved to Spark as the actual uh, processor and the transputer as the fabric. <laughs> Well, um, I think I have forgotten that, actually. <laughs> um, the next step after that, actually, was, was coming out with a new fabric ourselves, um, which was, uh, so we'd sort of migrated into Spark for the computer, and now we migrated into Spark for the, um, for the internal architecture of the, of, of the uh, network interface. And, uh, and being young and enthusiastic, we just totally forgot to patent anything. <laughs> So that was a bit of a mistake, but it was a lovely RDMA fabric, and it had a really low latency, and it was at a time when um, I think 10 megabytes a second or something was, was deemed fantastic. We were delivering 70 or, or over. Um, there's some of the designers are right here, so they'll give you the information. Anyway, um, we were very, we were technically extremely innovative, I would say, at uh, Mako, and um, from a business point of view, I'd, 
I think we, we could have done better. Um, so, um, but you know, considering how long um, the enterprise lasted and the number of generations of, um, of technology that we produced, um, I think we had a pretty good track record. Anyway, um, Miles mentioned that uh, Livermore was our, was our sort of our nemesis customer, if you like, um, at Mako. Uh, for me personally, actually that's worked out really, really well because uh, some of the contacts that I built up um, at Livermore um, had continued through my life after Mako. I was working for a while as a as an independent consultant, and um, and I was on the phone one day to some chaps at Livermore and said, uh, "Oh, I've done this um, really amazing scalable lock manager." And so I was obsessed with lock managers because we'd been porting Oracle Oracle Parallel Server onto transpeters first, and then Spark, and of course the infrastructure they needed was a parallel file system, well, parallel block storage actually, and a distributed lock manager. And so I'd gone through n generations of implementing distributed lock managers. Um, I'd also actually implemented a parallel file system in which, because there was only one person to implement it, I thought, oh my god, how am I going to do this? Well, ah, I know what. I can put all of the metadata onto one file system, and then I can put stripe the data across the other file systems and just fudge the whole thing like that. And we delivered that to Livermore. Anyway, so Livermore came back to me and said, well, we've got this file system called Luster. It's uncannily like the file system that you wrote. You know? But uh, we need some people to work on the networking. So that was kind of the next step I took was um, getting involved with the uh, Lustre group. And that got me into the whole sort of open source Linux development world. And, uh, and that was a real eye opener to, to discover that there were actually um, you know, the, a network of, of kernel programmers around the world that you could um, tie into and make an actually, actually make a very good living out of. Um, and in fact, you know, in the early days of Mako, we were looking for kernel programmers. And uh, there was not a one to be found. You'd have to really you'd probably have to go off to the States or actually pay, pay city salaries um, before you get hold of anybody like that. So, yeah, I mean, the, the situation has actually changed. So this was uh, the mid to late 90s when all of this stuff uh, started happening. And I was working with the Lustre team, and we installed, um, we continued developing uh, the file system and installed it around the world, um, achieved, you know, um, performance numbers like in measured now in terabytes per second of, of um, POSIX file system bandwidth, which we were all very pleased with. Um, and that whole thing kind of kept on going until um, that the, the group was acquired by, uh, the, the group of independent programmers really was, was acquired by Sun. And at that point, um, I sort of came with the group as a, as a hostage. Um, and, um, and so we worked within Sun for a minute, and then the, the, the worst thing happened, which was Sun was acquired by Oracle. Oops. <laughs> um, so I was sitting in a, in a VP's uh, office one day in Oracle, saying, you know, the problem, the problem, <laughs> the problem I see for Luster is that, um, is that uh, my, my, my programmers, they're all really open source. And they and they really want uh, you know they really want to stay open source. And the VP said, "Yes, I think you're right. We are going to have to take you closed source." So that was kind of the end of it. So at that point, we spun out and formed this company called WhamCloud, which was uh, sort of a, a, an attempt to basically create an independent um, a company that would would continue to develop Luster. So that kind of well, actually, that only lasted for two years before we were acquired by Intel. Which kind of brings me full circle because uh, when uh, Thorny and I acquired uh, Inmos, I remember the chap standing there looking very serious and saying, well, now that we've acquired Intel, and everybody going, oh, God. <laughs> 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 Thank you. <laughs>